Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How are you? Wonderful, thank you. Excellent. Are you guys ready to start or are we still waiting for a few more to come on? We are ready. All right. So then uh, I want to say good afternoon and welcome to TA Thursday Business Series 1, How to Improve Your Bid Success Ratio. This event is being recorded for educational purposes. I'm Alicia Drake, a member of the TA team and today's moderator. We also have with us Mike Neal, our Tollway Consultant and Strategic Partner, along with Nita Sharp, Director of Program Development. This is an opportunity for you to learn about best practices and common pitfalls in the bidding process. You will hear directly from subject matter experts with years of experience, also the bid letting schedule, which helps businesses with project planning. And then that will be covered by Roderick Drew, Diversity Manager at the Illinois Tollway Program Management Office. Now keep in mind, our subject matter experts provide services to our TA clients at no cost. For those interested in becoming a TA client, please email us using the programs at chicagomsdc.org and I'll post that in chat momentarily. Now, as usual, consult, uh, excuse me, consultations with our subject matter experts do not guarantee a contract for your company. Now, participants will be muted. Uh, presenters will be unmuted to share their presentations. So please post your questions in chat and time permitting, they will be addressed during the Q&A. And if not, the questions will be compiled and sent to the appropriate presenter for follow-up. Now at this time, we will begin by bringing forth our president and CEO of Chicago MSDC, Vince Williams, to share a few words, followed by Nita Sharp. Vince? Outstanding, thank you so much, Alicia. And thank you to everyone for attending our TA Thursdays. This is a new initiative that we've started here at the Chicago MSDC, Minority Supplier Development Council, as well as uh, through this program that we have with the Illinois Tollway Technical Assistance. And it's a great way for us to provide valuable content for those that are seeking to do business uh, with the tollway, as well as some of the other corporations and municipalities that we work with. As Alicia mentioned, my name is Vince Williams. I'm the president and CEO of the Chicago Minority Supplier Development Council. And so I wanted to make sure that I welcome everyone to this new initiative because I think, again, it's a great way for us to offer valuable content that will measure and showcase the impact of the work that we do here every day at the council. Um, I'm also honored that MZI Group, which is a minority business enterprise based here in Chicago that has been with the council since 2009, outstanding, is definitely participating with us and offering these types of services and sharing these best practices, particularly on how to improve your bid success ratio. So at the end of this, please don't hesitate to reach out to Nita or Alicia our consultant Mike Neal to answer to answer any questions that you may have to further engage with us here at the Council and particularly the technical assistance program that we have here, but then any of the other resources that we have or we can help with. What we do understand is that during an incredibly challenging economic disruption as what this pandemic has caused that many of our minority owned businesses, particularly our black owned businesses, have been impacted the most. And so we want to be that valuable resource that can help point you in the right direction, build capacity, but ultimately sustain, stay in business and continue to get contracts and move on with it. So I thank you for participating. If this is your first time joining us, um, the team here will let you know how to get engaged, how to get involved, how to make sure you're a part of some of the other um, programs that we have on the agenda, but also they'll provide you with um, an actual opportunity to share what other information you would like to receive. Because if we can do this for you at little to no cost, um, but still able to measure the impact that it's having towards your business success, we're doing a good job there. All right. So thank you, team. Thank you, MZI. Uh, everyone that's on the call, we appreciate you. Uh, again, this will be recorded. 
This is a value add for working with us here at the Chicago MSDC. And uh, this is a tagline that I've been using going forward. We just get started, y'all. We just get it started. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Thank you for that warm welcome. Thank you also for your leadership and your support. All right, let's jump right in and have our presenters uh, share with us. We're starting with uh, Comprehensive Construction Consulting, or CCC, one of our subject matter experts. And we will have Berta uh, present first, followed by Peter, and then we'll have Q&A from CCC before we go forward with the bid letting schedule presented by Rod Drew. So Berta, um, we'll hand the mic to you and it's okay. all yours. All right, thank you. I'm gonna share my um, screen here. Let me get it full screen. All right, can you see everything properly? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Berta Perez, and I'm currently a project manager at the uh, Comprehensive Construction Consulting Company. I'll be speaking to you today regarding some of the common pitfalls of bidding construction projects. And um, I want to let's begin right here with picking the correct project. Be sure that when you are reviewing projects, you choose the ones that your company is able to properly and competitively bid. Ensure that the project you are bidding, you are able to make an acceptable profit for your company. And if during the estimating process, you realize that the uh, project will not be profitable or there, you won't be able to, to meet your objectives, uh, do not, not submit a bid you really don't want to have a project in which you are underwater before you even begin the construction process. Pre-qualifications and certifications. Be sure that you are qualified, pre-qualified and or certified to bid the project prior to starting the bidding process. Some projects do not require any pre-qualifications or certifications, but if the one that you are bidding has a requirement and you are not pre-qualified, that will mollify your bid. Also, confirm if there's any additional specialized training required. If so, make sure that you or one of your company representatives are able to attend the training or that you guys are already certified in that discipline. Projects that require uh, specialized training We'll have it noted in the bid form or the uh, bid notification. Pre-bid meeting and site visits. Please go to all the pre-bid meeting and site visits. Some projects require attendance to the pre-bid meetings in order to submit your bid. Otherwise, your bid will not be accepted. It would be very disheartening after you spent all that time and realized that no, your bid is no good anymore because no one went to the site visit. The site visits are also very helpful um, and allow you to verify any anomalies such as high ceilings or confined spaces, etc. That can help you uh, to properly quote the project. Also, as well as letting you see uh, who the other bidders are, who your competition is. You'll be able to see them at these uh, pre-bid meetings. RFIs. Ask questions. Never make any assumptions on issues that are not included on the drawings or in the specifications. All projects have a time period allotted so that questions can be asked by the bidders to the owners, to the architects, um, and to the engineers. Do not just add uh, material costs or manpower hours because you think that it's needed. If it's not on the contract documents, do not add in the costs. The other bidders will not be including these costs, and it may cost you the bid. Takeoffs and estimate. I can't say this enough. Always check your math, verify your numbers. Have someone else in your company review the estimate and confirm the numbers and takeoff 
it could be anybody, you know, even if they're not familiar with the project, they'll be looking for certain things that, you know, all projects have. Many bids have been lost um, due to transposed numbers or missing equipment. So it's very crucial that this get uh, checked. And unfortunately, in some cases, bids have been won by missing major components of the project and you're still responsible to provide that component regardless. So be sure to check your math, verify your numbers, make sure you have everything included. Equipment and manpower. Confirm that you have access to the proper equipment required for the job, such as lifts, some specialty power tools, anything that's that's different that's not, you know, just that you have in your warehouse or something that you use all the time. In addition, confirm that your manpower supervision is appropriate for the project. You do not want to have a superintendent that is super supervising road work that has previously only worked on residential high rise buildings or you know some industrial work. You, you really wanna make sure your supervision is adequate for the project that you're bidding. If not, this will cost you a lot of money in labor hours that you don't have covered in your estimate. So it's, it's crucial to have the correct supervision in place. Bid forms and documents. Once you receive the bid documents, please read them thoroughly and follow the instructions for bidding. You can confirm that you have all the additional documentation required for the bid, such as performance bonds, bid bonds, incorporations, licenses, WBE and MBE certifications. A lot of the bids require to have all this included uh, with your submission. Be sure to fill in all the line items on a bid form. If any item does not pertain to your trade, then mark that item not applicable. Be sure to acknowledge all the addendums and the RFI and properly date all your forms. And most important for any of this, do not be late with your bid submission. Um, if it's late, they don't take it. So be very careful with that. And now I'll uh, hand it over to Peter who will speak on uh, best practices. Thank you. Thanks, Berta. Thanks everyone. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here. OK, so this is what I've experienced um, on the contractor side for best practices in bidding large and small contractor projects. Uh, as you'll hear many people say, as well as Berta and I, uh, bid projects that match your company's history and current financial profile. Also, um, if you're bidding multiple projects, some lettings have a lot of jobs, so you might be bidding multiples in one letting. Uh, make sure that you take a look at all of them and see that you don't have a uh, lack of manpower or something in a right place. Uh, unit pricing cannot spread across multiple bids. This is a big problem that I'll touch on a little bit later as well. Uh, knowledge of each site is very important. This is a big thing in bidding. This gives you the advantage. Uh, you have to get um, you know, the okay from the client, they usually send you a letter and you're allowed to be on the site. Uh, some things I really like collecting there is uh, data on existing conditions versus proposed, which is mostly topography. Um, GPS is a big thing that helps locating utilities. Find out how you're getting on and off the project. Uh, the site visit's pretty good. Uh, on the 355, we brought a machine out and dug test pits. Um, and so when you're looking at multiple bids and it's uh, a couple of weeks before bid time and you've got all your special provisions lined up, uh, talk with your bonding agents, your insurance providers, your legal representation to review special provisions. Um, it's, it's extremely important that you get as much input from your own resources as anybody else's. Suppliers, this is a big one. Um, you want to send an invitation to bid to all material suppliers, including project material specifications, plan quantity, project location, and project duration. 
this is very vital as a best practice because, uh, as we all know, if the material is not on the site on time and people are waiting, this is costly. There's nothing worse than a bunch of finishers standing around waiting for a concrete truck. So you got to lock that in and you got to make sure it's locked in for the duration. So you'll eventually be signing an agreement with them. You want them to know that before they give you a quote on the unit price for the product. Uh, include a letter of acceptance, terms and conditions. That's what you're willing to work with with them. Uh, the big thing here is uh, timing on uh, your asphalt and concrete trucks because that material is placed and finished and uh, you can have lost time. Cost and loss of profit associated with material suppliers happens a lot. Um, and it's usually due to one or the other isn't able to meet the other's demands or requirements. And so constant contact, some concrete suppliers, you now tell them your length, width and depth and where you're at, and they tend to help with that. Uh, it happens It happens, and it helps. Uh, the big thing here is you got to put together a scope letter to your prime contractors or you have to put your bid together. Big thing is inclusion exclusions. Uh, what can we not cover or what do we cover completely? I've noticed this on the subcontractors bids I've received and some of them have 200 exclusions and one inclusion. Uh, that's usually a red flag for me. Always bid in unit pricing. Uh, sometimes a prime contractor will ask you to enter into an agreement of, well, how about we talk hourly or we talk daily or we talk, uh, you know, for so many units. Always bid in unit pricing. Uh, this is very critical. And that way, once you sign a contract or once you go into a proposal that's all bid unit pricing, it, it guarantees everybody's covered. And it's very important to that process. So that's what I've experienced with best practices uh, on large and small contracts. Thank you. Okay, thank you both Berta and Peter for enlightening us with uh, common pitfalls as well as best practices to help improve uh, your bid success ratio. Okay, we're checking chat and we don't see any questions. Again, if you have any questions uh, of the presenters, please drop it in chat and we'll get those questions addressed uh, before we adjourn today's event or meeting. Okay, at this time, we're going to turn things over to Rod Drew, a diversity manager with the Illinois Tollways Program Management Office. And he will go through the bid letting schedule and um, enlighten us. Rod? Hi, thank you, Nita. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Roderick Drew. I'm with the uh, Illinois Tollways Program Management Office and for the past few years I have assisted the Tollways Diversity Department as they implement their programs and initiatives that will uh, are designed to increase access to economic opportunities for small diverse veteran women owned businesses. Um, so I appreciate the um, invitation today. Uh, what I want to do is to talk about the um, Tollways bit letting schedule and doing business with the tollways. So I will share my screen and pull up a bit letting schedule as soon as I can find it. There we go. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Um, hang on a second. I don't know why. Get in. No, it's um, for some Peter. Are you still sharing? That might be why. To use mute. 
Okay, can every can anybody see this? Yes, we can see the bid letting schedule. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, um, so the tollway um, every two weeks uh, on the tollways website they produce um, an up updated bid lighting schedule and at a glance you see the legends at the top and it will tell you uh, at a glance by color and by shade um, the location of the work along the tollway system um, uh, whether it's um, the backbone of the tollway system which is 294 the central tri-state uh, going all the way out to Rockford um, on the Jane Adams uh, on I-90 um, or the Reagan Memorial uh, Veterans Memorial uh, tollway that runs in and around um, tollway headquarters in in, um, uh, in Downers Grove and even the new Elgin O'Hare Expressway that is um, uh, under construction right now um, out by O'Hare that will give O'Hare that Western access. So um, the tollways, uh, the bid lighting schedule, as you can see, it shows um, where the um, uh, work is taking place. It'll give you a snapshot of the type of work uh, that's taking place, um, whether it's rehab, uh, replacing, um, landscaping, electrical, et cetera. Um, and uh, it also gives you a brief project description so that you get a, an idea of what kind of work it is, as well as the advertising date and bid opening date. Um, the dates do change uh, and dates can move around, can move up and back. And even projects that were not on the bid letting schedule uh, two weeks ago can appear on the bid letting schedule as the tollway continues to create um, new opportunities and to uh, get those bid packages ready. So um, in a nutshell, the tollway intends to um, advertise over 70 uh, construction bid packages this year. Uh, 85 to 90 percent of those bid packages will be um, uh, uh, will be for registered small businesses. Um, they will um, uh, be in that uh, category of 5 million and under. And as you can see from the bit letting schedule, um, the Tollway Small Business Initiative Program um, has three tiers of contracts, um, uh, a million or less, that one to three million, and then three to $5 million category. Uh, the scopes, the prime scopes are in areas that we believe there is a, 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 a available supply of firms that can bid on it as as primes. So it's um, demolition, electrical, some vertical construction work, um, landscaping, uh, drainage, um, things of that sort. Um, and uh, starting this month, uh, the tollway has implemented a rolling owner uh, controlled insurance program. So uh, most, if not all of those small business contracts that we'll see on the bit letting schedule will be covered by this uh, umbrella general liability insurance uh, package that will again level the playing field, remove that barrier to uh, prime participation for a lot of small and diverse firms. So uh, early on in the in the construction season, we have a lot of um, we have and had a lot of landscaping tree planting projects that are going out. Um, we are starting to see several plaza modification contracts come on to the bid letting schedule, and that is essentially the tollway still. Um, uh, has coin operated lanes uh, or areas on the tollway system where you can throw change into a, a, a machine uh, a, and pay your toll. And um, uh, not surprisingly, uh, those coin uh, operated baskets are very expensive to maintain. Uh, cars hit them all the time. Uh, and you, if you're on a busy tollway, you want to keep traffic moving. So uh, the tollway intends to um, begin removing a lot of those um, toll baskets uh, from the system and open up the system just like we have that open road tolling. Um, and those contracts will involve uh, demolition to take down the structure, paving 
to replace the pavement that's um, ripped out and needs to be patched up, as well as maintenance of traffic to make sure uh, that the work can be done safely for both the uh, crews in the field and for um, our uh, traveling public. So uh, the bid lighting schedule typically will take you out six months. Uh, so till um, May or June. Um, and as I as I said, uh, there are a lot of projects here and you can see as we get into the TBD category, there are a lot of contracts um, that still need to be uh, that we still need to figure out the bid uh, range, uh, what range it'll fall into and whether or not it will be a small business contract and have the ROSIP on it. Uh, you can see these ITS contracts, uh, the, the camera installation, those are all electrical contracts. Um, and, and we're going out till July with some um, really big projects. But uh, again, the lion's share of bid packages to be offered by the TOWI this year will be um, prime and subcontracting opportunities exclusively for registered small businesses with the state. So if you're not registered as a small business with the state, get registered. Uh, go get in the habit of going to the TOWI's website every couple of weeks. Uh, work with NIDA and CMSDC to get the latest um, uh, information from her. Uh, and you can always uh, please visit the Tollways Diversity webpage. It has a wealth of information on, on um, their various programs and initiatives, as well as uh, the place to find this bit letting schedule. So with that, I will be um, happy to answer any questions and I uh, appreciate your time. Wonderful. Thank you, Roderick. I'm looking and I don't see any questions in chat. So since we have a little time, can you back out? And for those unfamiliar with the uh, Tollways website, can you show us how you got to that point where you're showing the bid letting schedule? Sure. So I will go to Uh, so this is the landing page uh, for the Tollways website. Uh, the menu in the upper left, go to the Doing Business tab. It'll break down into, uh, you can either go Construction and Engineering if you're looking for bid opportunities, or you can go to Diversity if you're looking for information on uh, diversity programs and initiatives. But if you click this uh, Construction and Engineering section, uh, and then go to bids and bulletins. Uh, you will see they have a calendar. Uh, well, there are uh, several things. One, it'll take you to the page where you can um, get to the Tollways online planning room and access um, live uh, contract documents for active bids. So that's one thing you can do. You can also click on to this bit letting schedule and that's what I was showing you and I just actually I blew it up so that it could be um, easily seen on the screen. Um, and then there's information as you're bidding if you um, are looking to utilize virtual bid credits or uh, to get more information if you've monitored tollway um, construction bids you know that um, uh, many of them will include uh, virtual bid credits. Um, and then there is also uh, a location if you go to the Tollways uh, website or diversity website, uh, you will see information on the small business initiative. And I always do this uh, again in order to bid as a prime on one of the Tollways small business initiative contracts, you have to be a registered small business with the state. So coming here, you can um, review the criteria and then um, uh, figure out where to go either to find um, registered small businesses if you're a prime or you can actually download um, the application uh, or you can get to uh, the IPG. Here we go. So this is where you would go to get registered as a small business. And then the second step is to fill out this tollway application um, in order to verify your 
status in the state's um, small business program, um, and this is needed um, at the time of bid uh, as a prime. But um, again, those 70 plus, the lion's share of those 70 plus contracts coming on uh, that the tollway will be advertising this year, uh, both the primes and the subs will have to be registered small businesses. So it's really important to, uh, to take that step. Wonderful, thank you. One question, Rod, um, with the Small Business Set Aside Program and the Small Business Initiative, are um, small business owners able to do teaming arrangements or do they have to do just um, standalone? So for the Small Business Initiative, uh, the tollway intends to allow that teaming as long as you do not, those two companies together, do not exceed the small business cap of annual revenues of 14 million. So as long as they don't, the, um, you're good to go. Okay, great, thank you. And I also like to acknowledge, I'm told also in the room is Diana Hennington and Siobhan Moore with the tollway. So we'd like to say thank you for attending today and uh, supporting our Technical Assistance Center, Siobhan and Diana. Okay, Rod, thank you so much. I don't see any questions in our chat. So okay. that's a good sign that um, uh, you are addressing uh, concerns in a timely manner. Excellent. Well, I appreciate your time and happy to come back, you know, along with uh, my friends at the at the tollway uh, who I report to uh, anytime you ask. Wonderful. Thank you again. OK, so we are ready for our uh, final presentation. This afternoon, and it will be from MZI with Kim Nelson. Uh, before I bring up Kim, uh, Mike, would you like to share anything? Mike, our tollway consultant and strategic partner is also on the line. Anything you'd like to share um, that has been discussed so far? No, I think Rod knocked it out the park. Uh, again, this is all overview. Uh, so when we get together with you one on one, we can help you navigate uh, all of these here uh, nuance. So don't don't get freaked out. We're, we're there to help you and hold you through the process. And uh, again, um, we're just happy uh, to serve you and help you get that bottom line uh, up. So that's all. That's all I wanted to share. Wonderful. OK, we'll turn it over to Kim. You have the mic. Good afternoon, Roderick. Thanks so much. Um, it's nice to see all the um, projects that are coming out to bid with Tollway and the walkthrough of the actual um, site. Um, I'm Kim Nelson. I'm with MZI Group. We're a utility contractor located in Chicago, Illinois, um, and we've been a part of the technical assistant program for about two years now, and it's been a very very fun to be a part of it and help see uh, small businesses grow. Um, we were a small business at one point and I have had the, um, been able to work and grow with the small business. So I'm familiar with a lot of different hats and understanding what you need to do so that you can grow your bottom line along with, you know, the pitfalls of what can happen when you're bidding something large to bidding something small and knowing your customer. So I'm gonna um, present my screen. And we're gonna um, start off um, regarding, you know, best practices when bidding, um, knowing your competition. It's always good to know what you're doing when you're going into a bid and understanding who your your competitors are. Um, what also, from a comp competition standpoint, are uh, are the bids on that you're bidding on best fit for your company's culture? Knowing that your team understands the the bid, the process, and understands what the customer needs are. Having the right estimating platforms to um, understand what you need to do to bid the work. 
um, focus on projects that will result in repeat business. So um, as you grow with your client, understand what their needs and wants are when their um, as, when their RFIs and RFPs are coming out and kind of understand the forecast of what kind of projects they have um, throughout the year and your future for forecasts. Um, attend pre-bid meetings, identify the decision maker um, who at your customer or and or government agency is a decision maker um, to understand if you have any questions regarding the bid. Um, is there anything in the bid that you're unsure of? Um, identify who you can talk to when going to actually present and um, put, put this bid together. Break Excuse down me, your Pam, bid. Me, yep. We can't see your screen. Are you sharing? I am. Shoot. Um, hold on. Let me escape. Uh, That's weird. Sorry about that, guys. One second. Is it back up? We can see it now. Yes. OK, good. Um, sorry. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so Break down your bid and explain your return on investment to your team. So understanding once you receive your RFP, here's a good bid flow chart um, that we kind of use. So we receive our RFPs from our customers and or we re, you know, receive the um, bids on any of the uh, government agencies websites or sometimes our private clients will send the bids through their platforms or sometimes depending on the size and scope of the project, it'll get emailed by that project manager. Um, so we receive the RFP, we share the RFP with the team, depends on what the actual project is. So we, we negotiate what division it's gonna go to and what estimator is going to take on the action of that actual project. And then we talk about our go, no go decision. Is it, is it something we wanna bid? Is it something that we can actually bid? What's our backlog look like? Um, do we have enough um, teammates to be on this this actual bid, or is it just too big and we can't seem to um, be able to take on that at that time? If if there if the bid's a go, um, we get in a meeting with our team. We have a kickoff meeting. Um, we apply an RFP lead. So whoever the project manager or the division head is, they oversee it. The proposal manager looks, which would be your PM, um, kind of oversees the actual documents of the bid, um, make sure that we read everything from a contract standpoint, um, anything that you know needs from a bonding standpoint, legal and or what kind of insurance requirements. Um, practice and review the approval. A lot of times during bigger bid submittals, um, they request a lot of resumes, back past history of what you've done as a company. Are you capable of doing this? Um, a lot of times when we're putting our RFPs and our bid proposals together, we like to you know, show our value add, any key things that we can bring outside of just that bid. Um, and then what kind of uh, finished product that MZI and or our team can provide to that client. Um, and then depending on how we have our final review meeting, and then once it's um, reviewed and we all are in agreement of the number, um, we either submit it to a different platform or if, you know, prior to um, COVID, we would go to our bid meetings and then you'd hear the bid results. Um, now it's all through virtual, so. So as far as estimating uh, planning, um, we, as a team here, have an estimating group that looks at different um, private and or public websites to see what kind of bids are coming out. And we have weekly estimating meetings on what we're bidding on. Um, we review what's going on. We talk about what we can bid, how much stuff we are bidding on, and what we need to do to move forward, and what we're winning and what we're losing. We have pre-bid reviews. Um, anytime we have a certain bid scope that's above you know, 250,000 plus, 
um, our whole executive team oversees what's going on with the bid to make sure that we know that um, everyone is in agreement and there's nothing that can come into the play that, you know, we're all um, get sidetracked once the bid, uh, we actually get the actual bid. We establish relationships with both sides, uh, make sure that, you know, everyone is in agreement of what we're bidding on. We talk to the client. Um, we establish project rates. So depending on, you know, our estimates, there may be multiple different estimates that are coming in that we've bid on in the past um, that we can look at. Um, and then we also do a bid review and a post bid review after we do the job to see what we've done right and what we can, what we have um, from a margin of error on our projects. Um, we oversee the policy and procedures of each of the actual um, bid and estimate process, and then making sure that we have the right equipment and tools and management pieces to make sure that we are doing right the right stuff to put on for the bid. So um, developing an estimate base is just pretty just basic. Um, knowing what your labor rate is, you know, depending on what labor is being put on that project, having that cost. You know what what goes into play your work comp your general liability your overhead um, and then any incidentals that may fall into that labor rate um, how many labor hours uh unit of measures on that how many you know what how long is the schedule going to take how many hours um, is there going to be more uh project management on this so you got to build your hours and understanding the actual estimate of the job Equipment cost, how many how many pieces of equipment are you going to have on there? Are you going to have to rent the equipment? Are you, you know, are you getting the actual uh, equipment quotes from the different providers that will be on your jobs and knowing what that's going to cost in your bid? Material prices, are you negotiating with your vendors prior to that uh, bid um, submittal? Um, we, you know, we try as hard as we can to have the best rates with our vendors. Um, and know what you know we're prior to what we're bidding um, what's the cost of some of our material um, is our takeoff is our qual do we have a quality takeoff is there any contingencies unforeseen circumstances that may occur anytime during that project that we need to see now that may come up mid project and then variances that develop to you know, fluctuate different expenses. You know, we may be, there may be a time where the project may be put on hold due to weather, um, equipment, material isn't at the job on time, um, may need to have labor finish up on another project. So there's a lot of variants that come into play on bigger projects. And sometimes, you know, we don't always get our material in. And then what are the indirect costs um, that we need to know that may go into this uh, bid that we would see at the end. So there's a lot of different estimating tools. A lot of our smaller bids that we um, bid on and use from an estimating standpoint, we do use some form of Excel's that, templates that we have. Um, we use a program called CONAS that we put all of our labor and or material equipment costs that help us do takeoffs for the bids. Um, each division has a proposal template so that we are making sure that, you know, our, our on our marketing side that everything's going out with every, you know, clean um, and that all proposals have our information on it and um, are looked over. And then um, using Microsoft Project to schedule, do estimates from a scheduling standpoint um and overseeing what how long the project would take this is also a little description of our no go go and also our bid log so we put anytime we bid something we put into a log and then we go back and see hey it looks like you know we should be maybe not be bidding against this client anymore we're not really winning what's the reason um who are competitors that we're bidding against that we're not winning um so there's a lot of different questions that our estimators and our team um, talk about weekly on what we're seeing in the industry too, um, what kind of government projects that are coming out, what kind of capital projects that are coming out, um, which you know helps 
kind of foresee what your work in progress and also kind of your return on investment, like your bottom line as to how your year is going to go. Um, but a lot of that also has to do with just, you know, in general quality of your company. Um, are you having meetings regarding your estimates? Um, are you having status reports regarding the bids that you've done? Um, records and are you keeping records and documentation of what you put into your bids? Um, we, I have two box talks here, but I just, you know, making sure that safety is included in your bid um, is that's a cost, making sure that all, you know, safety is your number one on any project that you start from start to finish. Are your submittals correct? Um, are you emailing, text messaging, sometimes, you know, making sure that you're doing the right communication with your client? Um, so there's just different ways of making sure that everything is put together and all your teammates are talking. And then here's just a quality plan flowchart. Um, it's kind of involves, it's not really in from, from an estimating bidding standpoint, but it kind of helps, you know, initiate planning, implementation, and closure. So you're initiating the RFP, you're planning during that process with your team, you're implementing the actual, um, what it's going to cost, and then you're going to submit it. Is it, are you going to, are you going to win the bid? Or are you going to lose, are you losing the bid? And then just planning, schedule development, project plan, cost planning, and then all those. Is there any risk in planning? Your, is your team together? And then the procurement side. That's that. You guys have any questions? Um, you know, we, I would love to work with whoever needs help from an estimating standpoint. Um, we have, um, a, I think, four or five estimators here at MZI as well. So um, we can work with you um, any way you would need us to. Great. Great. Okay, thank you, Kim, for that presentation. We appreciate it. And TA clients, remember, you have access to our subject matter experts. Um, at no cost to you as a client and for any company on today's call that is interested in becoming a TA client, feel free to reach out to us. Um, the TA team, myself, Alicia Drake, and also Mike Neal will be more than happy to assist you. Nita, did I see a question come up? Yes, I do see one question. Um, where can you find good estimators? That is a very good question. It's not easy to find very good. It's not, it's very hard to find a good estimator and also to trust and know that they understand the project. Uh, it's, we've actually been fortunate. We found some good ones, but we kind of train within. Um, some of our project managers actually became estimators. Um, we talk throughout the industry. Um, it's hard. I'll tell you that we we have we have a hard time trying to find good estimators um, and making sure that they stay within your company, they're part of your culture. Um, but we've looked on job board. We have a agency that looks for um, different uh, positions, and I mean that. Hope I answered your question, but that is a really good question because it is hard to find them. Yes. Yes. May it. I uh, may I make a statement Go on ahead, that? Uh, that is the. I mean, that's one of the major challenges with uh, companies finding and keeping good estimation. It's estimate because everybody is always trying to get them to come over with with more incentives. What what I would suggest with this program, if you have someone that have some relatively uh, understanding of estimations, I think we could, what would be appropriate, we can get you in with companies like MCI and Kim, then they can provide that one-on-one -on -one more support directions with a person that you may think that have the potential because going otherwise going through you know your your human resource you're doing your advertising you're 
those things you have to do to vet them and, and so forth. So and then there's a lot of costs involved uh, putting that type of uh, 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 money into someone and they may not prove out. So I'm just saying there's something you may who may be looking for an estimator, maybe look in house first on who may have the potentials and then we can arrange uh, to, to sit down with MZI or other, or other uh, subject matter experts to actually train them more in an advanced manner. So I just wanted to give that 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 uh, tip. It. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I also to add on to that. Um, we we also try to have like a lot of our PMs understand the estimating side of the business. So like I said, I think I know small businesses don't have the the sources that we can now have, but um, just communicating as a whole team on the actual project, right? So the more you see an estimate and a takeoff, um, the more you understand the project. And we, some of our teammates are on consistent projects. So over time they can see what's going on and know, you know, what it costs. Um, we're pretty open about what our, what it costs as a company as a whole. Um, so our, our project managers and our estimators have, you know, the tools of understanding what it costs just to even run a business. Um, also, just what it costs per employee, you know, understanding that there's a cost behind each person that sits in a seat at, at, at a company. So um, communication is key. Marketing is a huge, you know, advantage to um, a lot of people like to make sure that you're bid package you know, it's put together, it's not thrown together in a number, um, but I got times, there's times where you got to get your number in and, you know, we need to get work, so. But yeah, I'm here to help you guys in any in way you need me to, so. Great, Kim, I see a comment that MZI has an awesome process. <laughs> so congratulations to you. And I do want to open it up to Berta and Peter. Any comments about um, that question? Where can you find good estimators? Um, Kim is correct. It's very difficult um, to find good estimators. And the best way to do it, like she said, is to just have someone, uh, you know, train someone up and, you know, Keep them there. That's it's difficult. It's hard to get uh, good estimators. There's also a good way I've seen good estimators uh, is take someone that's been through it. You know, I've I've seen laborers that end up being foremen and superintendents, and you know, sometimes the opportunity to get out of the field is there, and the hands-on people really have a lot of good knowledge that helps with estimating. Great, thank you. Okay, another we question. We also estimating support at our company as well. Oh, thank you, CCC, Peter. All right, so another question I see is, where can you find good uh, PMs, project managers? Um. I guess I can take that. Um, as far as project managers, um, we've actually have some young um, PMs on our team. Um, we have in the last year or two have started a MZI university. So um, we evaluate, you know, what they need, their needs and wants. Um, we encourage them to go to school to get their PMP. Um, but I think it really has to do with like a lot from your culture, uh, the culture of your business, and then, you know, understanding their background of where they've worked, um, what they, their knowledge is on, you know, the construction industry. But you can also take someone that doesn't have a knowledge in construction and teach them how to become a project manager just by giving them the right tools. Thank you, Kim. You know, I, would, I, would, I would also say that investigate some of your colleges that uh, students are going in to the type of construction management engineering fields that may need some internships. So you may be able to get someone to come in with, you know, basic 
stipends or whatever and kind of fill them out so that way you're not investing a whole bunch without knowing if that person will prove out. So those are uh, areas that um, you know you can also explore that people are going in pursuing a career in those fields. Yes, we also help with uh, project management development. Uh, we have a lot of senior level people uh, at CCC and collectively we all can work together with that. Great, thank you. Appreciate that feedback. OK, as we approach the end of today's PA Thursday, I don't see any other questions in the queue. So um, Alicia, I'm going to ask you to um, close us out. Um, I see that I have a request from Isaac. Isaac Bishop, you'd like to share something quickly? Okay, let's see if we can get you unmuted. I'm here. My screen was just all kind of cattywampus and I couldn't get to you. So here we go. There you go, Isaac. You should be up there now. Thank you. I, I just wanted to share, you know, people were talking about how do they get good estimators and good project managers that, you know, our core business at Comprehensive Construction Consulting is really developing project managers, uh, working with estimators. That's what we do every day. So even if you go out and you find somebody who's young from a university, they still need development. They still need training. And that's how we can support you is when you identify that person is helping you develop an in-house project management system because project management is about a lot of different things about making sure you're controlling costs, that you're controlling time, that you're controlling the quality of the work. How do you develop that quality program? How do you how do you tie your yeah. cost management to your time management on site? So I think that if you find that person, that's one of the things that we've got a team of people that can help you develop those folks. And even when it comes to getting a good estimator, you know, I'm, everyone had a lot of great ideas, but what I normally do is I look for the be better contractor companies, you know, like if I'm gonna look for a Walsh guy or somebody from Passion, I go find a guy that's already over there because what I've learned about some of those companies is that their project managers are already trained in estimating. So I'll go find a guy from there. And that's how I start when I'm looking for an estimator and then develop that person from there. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add that in. OK, thank you for that, Isaac. So both uh, CCC and MZI can assist you uh, clients with those uh, business development needs. And I'd like to thank both of our uh, subject matter experts um, who participated today. They have been actually certified, both companies, with uh, Chicago MSDC for a number of years. So we uh, appreciate your support and uh, your participation in today's TA Thursday. All right, we're almost at the five o'clock hour, so I will hand it off to Alicia. Thank you, Nita. Now, this concludes our TA Thursday. We want to thank you for taking the time to participate. It is our hope excuse me, that you have obtained relevant information to further your business through our subject matter experts and the tollway. Now you will receive a survey um, for today's event, so please complete it because your input is invaluable. So should you have additional questions, feel free to contact a TA team member. And also please save the date for our next TA Thursday scheduled for February 18th from five, excuse me, from four to 5 p.m. Have a great night and we'll see you at the next TA Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thanks, bye-bye.